In the beginning, Chuku's wife Kamosu died in a great explosion, and from her body the universe was created. In his grief, Chuku recluded into a secret chamber known as Obi Chuku, a four-walled pillared chamber far from creation and existence itself, which was neither in sky nor earth. From the pain of his loss, Chuku would spend the rest of his existence in this chamber. But Obi Chuku was a world unto its own, and within this chamber, Chuku was surrounded by his heavenly creations, the Arushi, and his messengers among many. And together, they would take on the task of rebuilding and organizing the universe from the body of his deceased wife. For when Kamosu died, she resurrected as Allah, the earth we live on today. But Allah was wrapped in the darkness of Wa, the universe, or the remains of Kamosu, also known as Neke, the merciful mother. But despite the darkness, Chuku's rebuilding of his wife, or in other terms, the rebuilding of the universe, was going along well. Though, in order to finalize his creation, Chuku hatched a plan. Chuku looked upon all of his creations, and for the purpose of his next plan, took interest in the Ebenu. The Ebenu was a loving and caring young bird who was nursing her sick mother and sick father back to health. Her efforts ended in failure, and their condition grew worse by the day. Meanwhile, Chuku continued to watch. And after some time, Chuku called the Ebenu forward and gave her a mission. Chuku told the Ebenu that she must go down to Allah and check the progress of his creation. The loyal daughter was honored and knew the sight would be something great to see. In fact, the Ebenu, as she always did, thought about her parents and how she could honor them before they passed away by showing them the glory of Chuku's design. And so, she placed her parents on her back and took off into the virgin universe. But upon arriving, the Ebenu saw nothing. The universe was a realm of cosmic darkness known as Odiaku, without a grain of light to guide her. The earth itself was covered in Oshimiri, or the tears that Chuku used to bury his wife. And the distance between Obi, Chuku, and Ala was so great that the Ebenu worried that her parents would not make it. And so she flied as fast as she could, but then it happened. The first to die was the Ebenu's mother. And without sight of solid ground to bury and honor her mother, the Ebenu opened her own head and buried her mother in there. Next, her father died, and with great sorrow, she opened her head again and buried her father within. Despite the pain of her loss, the Ebenu continued her mission. But with new weights and a great distance to travel, she grew tired. It was then that she made out the form of an ube tree, where she finally decided to perch. Now that she was resting, she began to think of her deceased mother and her deceased father, and the pain swole inside her until she could take it no longer. And then she let out a loud, pained cry, Ube. The cry was so loud and came with such force that a giant egg came from her. And the egg she lied fell into the abyss of the new world. And then the Ebenu heard a crack, and then another, and another, until the egg hatched. And what she saw next stunned her from that day till the end of time. Out of the egg came a great ball of fire and a great ball of stone. Both celestial bodies took to the sky, and from there, the sun, Nanyang, and the moon, Ongwa, were born. From the sun and the moon, Nebenu fell to Dioma, the embrace of Chuku, or love in the form of light, the same feeling she got when she held her parents. In fact, when the Ebenu looked onto Ongwa and looked onto Anyang, she felt and saw the spirit of her mother and father, reborn to watch over Chuku's creation the way she desired them to. The Ebenu was filled with happiness, and from this great deed, as well as her heart as a steadfast and loving daughter, she was crowned the Empress of the Sky, and both her mother and her father became immortals, who would be honored by their daughter and by Chuku through the act of overseeing creation for the rest of time. And that's it. Uh, this is Derek O'Father and with The Medicine Shell. I want to thank you for watching. Hit subscribe if you are interested in Igbo spirituality, cosmology, culture, and everything I cover on this channel. I'm interested in making these videos full time and becoming a patron on Patreon will go a long way in helping me make this happen. I want to thank all my current patrons for your contribution. It means a lot to me and everyone learning from this channel. And if you're interested in donating, there's a link below or you can go to www patreon.com slash medicine shell otherwise let me know what topics you're interested in seeing me cover and if you can't donate uh, sharing this or making somebody else aware of these videos goes a long way in helping as well also i mentioned there was a revelation that i had made when learning about onwa and anyang and it was through the story of the ebenu 
Now, before I say this, I want to make sure that nobody takes this comparison too far left into a place that can't be at least verified with evidence. Because our culture suffers a lot from uh, pseudo-history and attempts to link us with people that we have nothing to do with. But I do find this particular story interesting because it's very similar to a story and matches all of the same beats as the Egyptian story of the Bennu. The parallels are really fascinating in my opinion. Uh, both of them fly over the primordial waters on a mission to check on the progress of the world. Uh, they both perch. Um, our bird perches on an ube, the Bennu perches on a stone, and they both give rise to the sun thereafter, or the concept of resurrection. In the Kemetic language, I'm told that the name of the Bennu alludes to rising in brilliance or to shine. What's also interesting is they're both herons, though in the Igbo version of the story, it's often told as a hornbill. The Greek sage Herodotus made it clear that the Greek phoenix is based on the story of the Bennu, and in all three cultures, the bird represents resurrection, though in the Greek bird, the phoenix dies and resurrects itself, but also maintains its same symbolic relationship with the sun, and even the palm tree, which is a symbol for Anyang and Onwa. I usually hesitate to bring up other cultures in these videos because uh, too little is known about Igbo history uh, by the average Igbo person, and sometimes people try to substitute that by making connections to other histories or even fables that we're better versed in, like the Bible. So I don't want to contribute to that trend. But again, the parallels are there and they are very interesting. Let me know what you want to cover next and stay tuned.